Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Southminster Steinhauer United Church, to SSUC, Spiritual Seekers United in Community. You're welcome to this circle no matter who you are, no matter what your week has been like, no matter 
if you've been here many times or whether this is your first time, all are welcome here. All sizes, all colors, all cultures, all gender expressions, all sexualities, all religions or no religion, all types, all people, period. We welcome all into this space so that we might commit ourselves to making this a safer space for all, where all can be welcome, to come wherever you're at, be whoever you are, whatever you need. At SSUC, uh, we think that spirituality is not about beliefs and doctrines, but about living fully and loving deeply. And so we do our best to focus on the values of our living, our desire to create community where we can question and ponder as we seek to build meaningful lives with each other and in our world. So welcome to you all this morning and uh, we offer a special welcome to those who are gathering uh, at our SSUC satellite uh, Saskatoon uh, congregation that are meeting in St. Andrew's College this morning. And uh, we welcome you that gather there. And, um, and we also recognize that they gathered for a meal this morning already and, uh, and had a chance at their table to send a little hello to us. Here it is. Hello, I told you it was little. <laughs> but we're grateful they did it because we get to see their faces and hear their voices. Welcome to you, Saskatoon. Whether we're here in Edmonton or uh, in Saskatoon, uh, we are both on Treaty 6 land. And so it's meaningful when we can acknowledge uh, the land and the territory of Treaty 6, recognize it as the adopted home to us, but the traditional home and traveling routes to so many indigenous peoples. It's with honor and gratitude that we can meet on this land, that we can speak about acts of truth and reconciliation, and then move from that speaking to actions and relationships. And so it is in that spirit that we acknowledge this land and the great honor it is to be here. There is uh, always time in our gatherings to share the exciting things that are coming up in the life and the work of our community. And uh, if you have uh, anything to share this morning uh, on that, I invite you to come forward. Um... It's on. It's on. A few weeks ago, we celebrated our 21st anniversary as an affirming congregation, but it's more than 30 years since the United Church General Council affirmed that all human beings, regardless of sexual orientation, were welcome in all aspects of church, including ministry. Two years later, in 1990, Desmond Tutu was a guest speaker at General Council, which met in London, Ontario. He commended the United Church for its courage. He's known for his work with apartheid and in abolishing it in South Africa. But as Archbishop of Johannesburg, he had also secured approval for the ordination of female priests and had a, supported a number of gay priests in senior positions in the Anglican Church in South Africa. Unfortunately, not all of Africa followed his lead. In some countries, Diversity of sexuality and gender identity can still be punishable by imprisonment or even death. Kenya's political elite claim that homosexuality is un-Kenyan and un-African, 
and they refused to amend the laws there. But after hearing Desmond Tutu speak, Kenyan Reverend Solomon Guchira worked to found the Pembezo Christian Council, an ecumenical, continent-wide organization focusing on LGBTQ support and advocacy for human rights. Members of that council see the churches in Africa as agents for defeating discrimination. Kenya's laws are less stringently enforced than in the past, and a safe house in Nairobi houses refugees from Uganda, Somalia, and South Sudan. These refugees are awaiting resettlement in a country where they can be free to express their true identities. That safe house, which is sponsored by the Council, depends on help from others, like those of us in the United Church who offer support through the Mission and Service Fund. In the spring of 2017, a group of 17 United Church representatives visited several Mission and Service partners in Kenya. In Nairobi, they met with members of the Safe House, sharing stories and offering encouragement and hope. While not yet totally free of discrimination, Canada has made huge strides in human rights. However, we need to remember that in many countries, there is still discrimination and persecution. Through the Mission and Service Fund, we can make a contribution and offer our support to those who feel victimized and hopeless. words of Nelson Mandela, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin, background, religion. People must learn to hate, and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. As we light this candle and honor 
this month of African heritage and black history, we recognize our commitment and our peace in teaching one another and in teaching another generation how to love. Let's gather our intentions, strengthen them, strengthen them together as we share these words in prayer. We gather to encourage one another to live into the full potential of our common humanity, even as we lament some shameful and painful chapters in our history, our harsh mistreatment of one another, and the evils of racism we commit ourselves to the work required to do better. Let's cultivate within us openness and gratitude for our diversity of colors and culture, of language and custom, of faith and tradition. May we deepen our resolve to treasure the mosaic of difference, to protect the dignity of each person, and seek positive and respectful relationships as we settle for nothing less than equality and equity for all. It's the time for all ages. Okay, is there room for everyone? There's room up here. So, um, I have a phone in my pocket, and when I shake it, it does something. The light turns on, so, uh, so that I can see when I get up in the middle of the night and, you know, whenever you need a flashlight, right? Well, that's, that's easy. But I brought, um, I brought a more fun one. This flashlight, you have to wind up. So, uh, well, it works if it's not... Nope, it doesn't work. See, I press the on button, it doesn't work. But, hold on, if I wind it... You can't be in a hurry to see. Okay. Let's see what happens. Now, when I turn it on, it works. Ooh, it's, it's a big whirring sound. It's kind of fun. Okay, well, I brought this flashlight because um, I thought that maybe um, we could talk about light. Uh, light is an amazing thing. We, we light a candle. That's some light. We turn on the lights uh, overhead with a switch. That's a light. We go outside, and thanks to the sun, our closest star, that's a light. Uh, nope, hold on, have to wind it some more. I haven't used it in a while. Oh, there, it's on. Okay, so, um, or there's, you know, fun things like this that provide light with a rechargeable battery in it. So, um, there are lots of ways uh, to shine light but I want to tell you about the way that's within us. We don't need this thing. We don't need that. We don't need the sun. We can do it all by ourselves. And what I mean by shining light is when we are able to be the amazing people we are and let other people see it. When other people can see our kindness, our beauty, our joy, our love. When, when, other people, when we let other people see that, we're shining. We're shining a light everywhere. So uh, I thought as a way to celebrate that, that we don't need any other light. We've got light within us that we can share with each other and it's beautiful and it helps people. It helps people see us. It helps people know us. And it helps people to also be loving and kind. So we've got a song that we're all going to sing today called We Are Walking in the Light of Love. That's talking about the light that's in us, not this kind of light, 
That's talking about the light that we've got, that we can let shine. So, um, if you've never sung this song before, we're all going to stand up. Everyone in the room is going to stand if they're able to. And we're going to talk about walking in the light of love because when we walk in the light of love, it helps us see. Maybe not the ground, but remember, we're talking about the light within us. So what we can see is the love in each other. What we can see is how to go from day to day with a loving and kind heart. So everyone stand up. We're going to sing this song, We Are Walking in the Light of Love. This is a wonderful South African song. And here we go. We are walking in the light of love. The words are so easy. We are walking in the light of love. We are walking in the light of love. We are walking in the light of love. We do it again. We are walking in the light of love. We are walking in the light of love. We are walking, we are walking, walking, we are walking. Ooh, we are walking in the light of love. Then we do that again. We are walking, we are walking. Ooh, we are walking in the light of love. Let's do it again. We are walking in the light of love. 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 We are walking, walking, we are walking. We are walking in the light of love. We are walking, walking, we are walking. Nice job, everyone. Excellent work. I went to uh, preschool class, to kid spirit class, to youth cafe. Have a good morning. For the rest of our gathering, uh, we are going to uh, participate in a, in a history and song. This is a sketch of Canadian black history through words and through music, uh, originally written by Olivia Smith and adapted for our use. This is, a, this is a sketch of black history. Of course, it doesn't contain everything. It cannot. But it speaks of some of that which needs to be remembered in our country's history. And as we go through the centuries, we will sing, we will hear, and we will hear from the choir and the ensemble, and we will share in what it is to honor African heritage. Through little acts of kindness, the healing powers that lie within a smile, and the miracles worked by gentle words of praise. Through little acts of kindness, we touch and change the human face of this world. Only by the power of the human heart does misery turn to beauty, despair to new life, and the killing weight of endless suffering become the freedom of possibility. Life calls us to celebrate its presence with love, the deep and burning kind of love that costs so much. May we find it within our hearts, the power of this love, waiting to be spilled freely and lavishly in every place that we find need. This world is ours to heal.
the 1600s. Slavery existed in Canada as it existed in colonies throughout the world. Although there are reports of slave ships arriving in the early 1600s, the first documented slave in Canada was named by their master, Olivier Lejeune, in 1628. Many of the documented slaves in Canada were, quote, owned by the clergy. It was not until the late 1700s that talks of abolishing slavery started in Upper Canada. While auction blocks were being built to sell people, the Christian church, for the most part, buried their heads in the sand as they sang. The 1700s. During the late 1700s, promises of freedom and land in exchange for British loyalty brought many freed black persons to Nova Scotia. Although no longer slaves, the black community was oppressed and denied basic civil and human rights. As a result, there was a mini exodus in the late 1700s when black loyalists and black refugees, the Maroons, took the offer to resettle in Sierra Leone. Although the churches of the time often attempted to preach a thin Bible to black peoples, focusing on servitude and honoring your master, the liberation message of the gospel was covertly shared through the hymns of Isaac Watts and the Wesleyans, offering hope and empowerment to an enslaved people. A reading from Christian scripture from the book of James, second chapter. Don't let public opinion influence how you live out your honorable life. If someone enters your church wearing an expensive suit and a street person wearing rags comes in right after and you say to the one in the suit, sit here, this is the best seat in the house, and either ignore the street person or say, better sit here in the back row, haven't you segregated what is created equal and proved that you are untrustworthy and judgmental? Listen, dear friends, isn't it clear by now that we're proposing something quite different? The world's down and out are the world's first citizens with full rights and privileges. 
Every person possesses the promise of an abundant life. And here you are abusing these same people. You do well when you live by this rule. Love others as you love yourself. But if you play up to these so-called important people, you go against the rule and stand convicted by it. This is a spiritual teaching passed down from the Jesus tradition. I think sometimes it can get lost on us just how dangerous words can be. Just how liberating words can be. Just how convicting words can be. <clears throat> there are passages in the writings of the Hebrew and the Jesus tradition in what we call the Bible that are strong enough to incite rebellion. There are words in that same book that are radical enough that they've been silenced at all costs. To those who hold power, they're told, you segregate what is created equal and prove that you're untrustworthy and judgmental. To those who hold privilege of place, of majority, of wealth, you're told the world's down and outs are primary. They have full rights and privileges, and every person has the promise of abundant life. And look at you here abusing those same people. So it's no wonder that slave owners and white churches and those who profited and benefited from the business of human trafficking would hide words like this away, who would do anything to have the ones they quote-unquote owned not read words like that. And in this way, they hid those words. They wouldn't allow them to be distributed. They wouldn't allow them to be read or preached. On the other hand, these very same words hold precious meaning for those abused, enslaved, purposefully kept uneducated and illiterate. Spiritual teachings that say, you need not be in the back row. You need not be in the back of the bus. You need not be on the outside looking in. You have the right, the birthright, to be honored in your full humanity. In these same passages, those that have been mistreated and dehumanized and excluded are told, your calling to abundant life is true, is valid, and is worthy. And so it's no wonder that slave communities, families, camps would create their own Bibles, their own sacred texts, much thicker ones that told stories of Exodus. Bibles that weren't on a page, but in the hearts and in, on the lips of those telling the stories over and over again of freedom, of the last being first. Unauthorized versions whose purpose was to give hope, to keep resolve, to persevere, to resist, to escape to know the truth of their value. And the thing about telling old, old stories and not having to have it written down 
is that it can't be taken away. Take this away, fine. But you don't take away the stories you heard as a child, the stories you tell your own children of resistance and purpose and perseverance. The same is true whether it be slavery, ethnic prejudice, social pressure to stay in closets of all kinds, racism, sexism, ageism, and every ism we've cruelly invented. There will always be texts that at the same time condemn the power and encourage the survivor. And so today, in the midst of this African Heritage Month, we pause. We pause to remember those who have been enslaved. We recall that for over 400 years, more than 15 million people were the victims of the tragic transatlantic slave trade. During this time, human beings were bought and sold and treated as property and considered to be less than human. With hope, perseverance, and solidarity, the journey toward healing continues. We pause to remember the families that were broken by enslavement and relocation. We don't have to draw too many lines to connect dots within our own stories, our own country, our own history when we recall the parents who've never seen their children again, when we recall the family ties that were broken because of forced separation, the tears that were shed, the bitterness caused. With hope, perseverance, and solidarity, the journey toward healing continues. We pause to remember the ways we continue in our world to treat others based on the financial profit we can derive from them. Persons who work in poor conditions and who are underpaid. Children who are forced to work and receive little in return. Migrant workers who are exploited. With hope, perseverance, and solidarity, the journey toward healing continues. We pause to remember that slavery still exists today. We remember those of every gender, teens and children who have been sold into prostitution. We remember kids who are left vulnerable by poverty and often dysfunctional system of child protection and care. We remember persons who are enslaved because of addictions of all kinds with hope, perseverance, and solidarity, the journey toward healing continues. When people through time have sung about rivers, they have in their minds many things, I'm sure. A baby Moses being set adrift on a river to save him from death. They have in their minds the waters that are, that are crossed to escape their captors. They have in their minds the waters of baptism that for millennia have been a symbol of coming out of an old and painful past and into a fresh and hopeful future. For entire cultures to go down to the river to pray was a pastime that harnessed the power of these stories. The power of hope and the perseverance of even the softest water to carve a new path through rock. This now is our time to ponder that perseverance and to remember where each of us find our own.
In the early 1800s, Canada and the northern part of the United States gained a reputation for being a safe haven for the enslaved. Seeking freedom, many enslaved people traveled secretly to Canada through a concealed network known as the Underground Railroad. Many churches and Quaker meeting houses became stations along the route to freedom. There is much mythology on how people communicated with each other between these stations. Since music and spirituals were often used by the black communities to counter the theologies being preached at the time, music seemed like a perfect way to convey messages of perseverance and freedom. the 1900s. Long after slavery was abolished in 1833 in, British, in the British Empire and in 1865 in the United States, life remained difficult for black people across North America. In the 1950s and 1960s, the fight for civil rights intensified. Several iconic moments include Viola Desmond refusing to sit in the back, in the back section only of the movie theater in New Glasgow, New Nova Scotia, Rosa Parks refusing to sit at the back of the bus in Montgomery, Alabama, the three civil rights marches from Selma to Montgomery, and the demolition of Africville in Halifax, Nova Scotia that resulted in the forced relocation of the historic black community. Many churches joined in the movement, while many others went about their daily business warning activists to slow down and temper your voices. Union United in Montreal has been the home of a vibrant black congregation for more than a century. Wilbur Howard became the United Church's first black moderator in 1974. When society actively put restriction on the rights of black people saying, you cannot sit here and you cannot march there, Songs were sung to give hope and peace amidst heartache and violence 
and to remind everyone who sang of their higher aspirations. In the 2000s, over 50 years later, the recent deaths of Michael Brown, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin, and many others have tragically reminded us that the fight for equal rights is far from over. Racial profiling continues to affect every aspect of society, from children in care to education and employment opportunities. It is clear that the fight for racial equality continues. What will our response be to the current reality of black and other marginalized people in this society? As we bring awareness and find ways to acknowledge our own privilege and battle our own racism, we affirm that the journey is far from over.
when the journey is long, we need each other to keep us close to our commitments and to keep each step in the journey. So with that, we share these words together as our closing commitments on this morning together. In a world where people are enslaved and dehumanized, we go to treat each person with dignity and respect. In a world where profit is valued more than human life, we broke to proclaim the priceless worth of each person. In a world where the ugliness of racism and white supremacy is found, we go to show that love in action can conquer all evil. We will live with courage, holding fast to what is good, committing ourselves to work for a more just and a more loving world. Run, Steve.